today we've got another piercing video for you because um, like two hours ago or something I got this piercing, the root piercing, the um, vertical bar, <laughs> yeah the vertical bar in my area, um, the only silver thing I'm wearing because everything else is gold. In any case, um, so yeah, I just got it done, so I thought, why not make a video of it? So I've done so for all my other piercings, so yeah. Um, I have a whole list of piercings I still want to get done, so there's going to be more in the future. In any case, I've made a list of what, I'm one, of what, of what I want to tell this time, because on some other videos it kind of made no sense, and there was no particular order in what I was saying, because I hadn't really paid attention to what exactly I was going to say. So yeah. And I just noticed there's a dead piece in my plant, potted plant over there. It annoys me. I'll just remove it later. In any case, um, so yeah, I got it done here in Rotterdam at Queen of Rings. Because it's my favorite piercing shop. And I got all my piercings done there. And I'm just really happy with them. So yeah. Um, so yeah, basically. Um, yeah. That's the thing with piercing shops, by the way. It's uh, like if you like if you're already like have multiple piercings and know the shop then you know just go to that shop uh, if you like the shop but if you like go for your very first piercing then you know it's always a good idea to look it up on the internet I did so too before I got my first piercing that was the helix um, I looked it up on the internet just to see what other people like on forums and things like that what they said about the shop and they were positive about it so yeah um, that's how I ended up there, um, but it's always a good idea to just, you know, check out what other people have to say about the shop, so you know where you're going to. Um, because there's good shops and there's bad shops, so yeah, you want to go to a good shop. Um, so yeah, in any case, um, with the piercing itself, um, I'm getting it done. It might differ slightly per country, so I'm just going to tell you how it goes here in the Netherlands. Um, you go to the shop, and they usually have kind of some kind of form that you have to fill in, you know, saying... That you really want to get the piercing and things like that. And that you know all the risks. Just you know, the regular stuff. Um, and you also got to bring your ID card. Because they got to be sure that you're actually over 16 here in the Netherlands. Or over 18 in some other countries. Also kind of depends on the piercing. Because for intimate piercings you do have to be over 18 here. In any case. Um, so yeah. Uh, basically um, yeah, the ID card. So they know who you are and what your actual age is. And yeah. And before that is usually... I really can't keep a decent order in things. In any case, uh, before that is usually they ask what piercing you want. So yeah, um, I wanted the root piercing. So yeah, and then just after all the thing with the form and the ID thing is done. Um, then they just bring out their stuff uh, at their workplace. And then they call you with them as soon as they've everything set up. As soon as they've got everything set up. Um, yeah, it's also just a question of whether you want it on the left or on the right. Personally, I already have this industrial on the... Right, so I wanted this one on the left because otherwise it would have gotten kind of crowded in this area. I mean, I think it's basically impossible actually to put it here. Well, maybe, yeah. Might have been possible, but I think it would have gotten too, too crowded, so I got it on this side. Um, so, yeah. And then there's the part of them cleaning the place. Um, you know, asking where you want it. Like, um, they asked me if I wanted to have it more like in the crook of my ear or more to the outside so it would be more visible from the front. I wanted it to be more visible, so they put a little bit more to the back. Um, so yeah, and then they just ask, okay, is this, uh, is this spot okay with you? Okay, it was, and then they just shove the needle through, basically. Um, yeah, like seriously, you can just ask yourself. Most shops will ask you if they, if you, if you want them to like count or anything before they put the needle through. Um, but if you really want that, then you can just ask yourself as well. Um, personally, I don't really care. I'm just like shove the needle through. Let's get this over with. Um, so yeah, and the needle is like, like yeah, it just goes through within like a second, and then the jeweler goes through, and then they clean it again. And that whole process from cleaning it beforehand to cleaning it after the piercing is done takes about two minutes or something. It's really nothing to be afraid of. Um, about the pain, it's well, honestly, I've heard horror stories about it. It's so painful, and I guess it does differ per person. For me, it wasn't very painful at all. Actually, it was like. Yeah, I had expected it to be about as painful as the front part of my industrial. Um, but I was wrong. I mean, the front part of the industrial was a lot more painful than this. Even though the rook... Yeah, I don't even know if it's actually called a rook. Piercing is called a rook, but yeah. In any case, um, yeah. The point is, <laughs> this the, the piece of the ear that it goes through is kind of really hard and stiff and everything. Just like the front part of the 
cardle is over here. So yeah, I was like, it might hurt just as bad as this did, but it really didn't. It was like the needle went through and I was like, oh, that was it? Okay. So yeah, that was a good thing, I guess. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's a first person, but it's really not the most horrible piercing ever at all. I mean, yeah, to me it was just like, okay, that was it. Okay, whatever. So yeah. Um, then in terms of aftercare, um, it's a carless piercing, so it takes long to heal. They told me it could take about three to nine months, which is kind of a large gap between those two times. Um, so basically, yes, my mom's walking up the stairs. Um, in any case, um, the, yeah, the piercing is, wait, I'll just pause the, pause the video for a moment. Okay, we're back. <laughs> In any case, um, so yeah, in terms of aftercare, it could take uh, three to nine months to heal. There's a large gap between those two dates. Um, I always have to keep it at like nine months, and if it's still sore after that, then I just leave it in until it's not sore anymore, until I'm really just sure that it's healed. Um, it's better to wait too long before changing it than to do that too quickly, because otherwise it might get, you know, infected or at least really irritated, which is not something you want. Um, another thing is for the first about six weeks, it's better not to go swimming or go um, sunbathing or, you know, when you're taking a bath, don't dunk your ear underneath the water. Just, you know, try to like keep it clean and keep it non-irritated, obviously. Um, another thing is cleaning it, it's also very important. Um, you can use like an antibacterial soap for that without alcohol in it. Um, or a sea salt solution, I prefer to use a sea salt solution. Um, and what I always do is like for the first week I clean it twice per day in the morning and in the evening and uh, the second week I only clean it in the evening and whenever it's just and after that I just keep cleaning it whenever it's either irritated or whenever I've done things like you know like once per week I uh, work at the animal shelter and after that I just clean it because you know it's still fresh piercing and I've been there out do on dogs the whole entire day then and you know it might have gotten dirty or something so then just clean it um, and after sports things like that just yeah um, so basically also it's a good idea not to sleep on it the first week but you probably won't want to <laughs> because like when I'm sitting here right now it just I mean I can sort of feel that something has been done with my ear but it doesn't hurt at all but when I touch my ear it does sting slightly so I should probably not lie on it um, but it's just the best to not you know, put too much pressure on it, so don't sleep on it, just sleep on your other ear. Um, so yeah, basically. Uh, but like I said, you probably, you know, you will notice if you're lying on it and it won't be comfortable. So most people just don't lie on it anyways. Um, so yeah, that's basically everything I have to say about it right now. Um, yeah. Yep. I've covered everything on my list. Um, yeah, so right now there's really not much else to say about this piercing. It's not very painful. It's, to me at least, it wasn't very painful to get it. It's not very painful now afterwards unless I touch it. Um, just clean it properly. Don't go swimming. Don't go sunbathing. Keep it clean. And that's it. And just keep it in until it's completely healed after like nine months. And yeah. So about other piercings, by the way, um, I did, you may have noticed it already, but I did uh, change my lip piercing. There used to be a really long bar in it, and now I have a prop appropriately sized bar in it. Appropriately sized bar in it, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the first time I changed it, because I had to go to the dentist last Friday. And um, yeah, I just I was like, he needs to be in my mouth and with tools, and yeah, I just didn't want to have a really long bar in there. That's, yeah. It would just not be very handy. Um, so I just put a shorter bar on it. Um, that's allowed after like two weeks with uh, lip piercing. Um, but only to put a shorter bar on it. Not to change it just for fun or to put different jewelry in it just for the prettiness of it. Just change it once to a shorter bar. Or if you're insecure about it and let the piercer do it. Don't just change it for fun because it got, it's not healed yet after that. I, I, mean, I actually waited for like three or four weeks actually. Four weeks, yeah. I waited for four weeks. Um, and yeah, so like about two weeks from now it will be completely healed. Um, yeah, so basically then I'll make a video on how to change it because that's just really easy. Ow. This is really easy to do. Um, also still plan on making a video on how to change a nose screw. Um, but there's still a little small keloid on top of it which kind of hurts if I try to twist out the nose screw, so yeah, I'm gonna wait with that until it's completely healed and not sore anymore. 
So yeah, and then I'm gonna make a video on that. Um, the helix piercing I'm still making, it's still planning on making a video about chasing that as well. Um, but I'm gonna wait with that until the rook is like more healed because otherwise I have to fumble with this ear while this is still sore and it's just not nice. So yeah, but the first piercing related video you can expect will probably be of changing out this one. So yeah, um, about the rook piercing I'll probably make another video about it once I have more to say about it basically. There's nothing much else to say about it right now and yeah, as I said it might take 9 months to heal so... I'll probably make another video about it in like 9 months or unless there's you know anything in or interesting about it I guess. Um, so yeah. In any case, I hope this video was uh, useful to people. Um, I hope you at least enjoyed watching it. Well, I'm watching it. Uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye! And then back to beauty related items. Um, I also bought this for my makeup kit, um, which is a brush belt by BH Cosmetics. And it was only 10 euros and it just 